I'm glad you can join me for another session. So we thank the Lord for you and uh, you having a hunger for the Word of God because I'm all about helping people to understand the Word of God that we can develop into being what God's called us to be. Because you know we're in difficult times. I want you to know God's with us. And he says, if God be for you, who can be against you? And I want you to know that the Lord is with his people. He will see us through that, through this time. But the wicked, the wicked need to get right with God. Those that are outside the will of God, they really need to come into a relationship with God like never before because he is the only solution. He's the only one that gave us victory during this time. So my prayer is that you are being steadfast, unmovable, always bounded in the work of the Lord because that's where our victory is. It's in the things of God. And we thank the Lord for our uh, officials. We thank God for our uh, center of disease control. We thank God for all that are trying to help us get through this pandemic and through this virus. And, and right now we're at a place right now uh, uh, that, uh, that the hot spots have now become the southern states like Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, Texas, uh, out West, Arizona, and uh, God is the only one that can bring us through this. But I want you to know, God has a remedy, and it's in the Bible, how to stop the plague. In other words, and we're going to use for a subject today, how to stop this plague. And, you know, see, God has a remedy, you know, it's, and it's not it's not a vaccine. It's not a multiples of vaccines or anything men can uh, make up or, or come up with, because what we're dealing with is far beyond man's ability to remedy. And it's going to take the hand of God to move into this. And it's going to take us as believers to cooperate with God in order to break this thing and set many people free and stop this plague so that we can carry out the assignment, so that we can preach the gospel of the kingdom, so that the signs, wonders, and miracles will hit the earth like we've never seen it before. And then many will believe a harvest will be brought in. Jesus Christ will come and take his people out of here and, and we'll reign and rule with him forever. See, this is what it's all about, folks. This is where we're at. We're in the last days. We're in the last days that Jesus prophesied in Matthew chapter 24 and in Luke chapter 21. And those days are with us and we are seeing the signs. We're seeing the things that point to his return. But I want you to know things will never go back like they were. Uh, church will never be as it was. And I believe the social distancing is probably with us <laughs> as long as we're going to be here because uh, the things are never going back to be the same. And uh, we just need God. We need to hear from God. You know, when our, 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 our political officials fail us, when the Center of Disease Control, Mr. Fauci and all of them are doing all that they can, still can't come up with an answer, still can't come up with a remedy, then we need to turn to the Lord. We need to turn to God. Why? Because he's in charge and he has allowed these things to bring people to where they need to be in God. So I want to read today from Luke chapter 18. I'm going to start reading with Luke chapter 18. We'll look at this story with the woman uh, and the unjust judge, the woman and the unjust judge who who who, who went to the unjust judge to, to, to avenge her of her adversary. And I'm going to start with verse number one. But oh, let's pray first. Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your word that's before us, God. And we thank you for the angels right now that will make the word revelation to us and help us to realize that you have the answer to what we're dealing with. And God, we declare a harvest net. We declare the strength of your people. And we declare a motivation and an activation of prayer in the life of your people like we've never known it before. God, we declare the beginning of a fresh prayer revival to hit planet Earth like we've never seen before. And God, that you will heal our land as we humble ourselves and pray. And we'll give you all the credit, glory, and honor will be yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, say amen to that because this is what we need. This is what we must have in the time in which we're in. So in Luke chapter 18, beginning with verse number one, and it says, and a parable, and he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought to always pray and not faint. That men ought to always pray and not faint. In other words, he's letting us know that prayer is something that we must continue to participate in. We must have as a priority in our lives, along with our reading and our study of the word. We must spend time in prayer. We must spend time with God before God, crying out to him because he's the only one that can bring an answer to what we're dealing with right now. You see, because even when the children of Israel was under 
under Egyptian bondage for 400 years that the, the Bible says, God said, the cry of my people have come up before me and I'll come down to deliver them. Otherwise, when they cried out to the Lord in their affliction, God sent them help. He raised up a, a servant, his servant by the name of Moses. And Moses led the children of Israel out from under Pharaoh who had been there for 400 years. Now, now this time in which we're in with what we're dealing with is very significant. And I do believe that this is this is the time that will, this is this, this is the season or this event and these occurrences is going to turn things around. I say it's going to turn things around. Why? Because we are at a pivotal point in history where in the, the 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 slavery the slave charter or the uh, North American slave trade started in the United States of America in in 1619 and we're at that place right now where the 400 year time cycle has expired now 400 years is very significant I didn't know I'd be saying all this because I'm doing this without notes to them just going by the Holy Ghost and he's leading me as the one I need to say because this is what he wants you to hear that with that re the reason things are so so, so Hence now is because the 400 year time cycle of slavery in the United States ended at the end of 2019. December 2019 concluded a 400 year time cycle for slavery or for the start of slavery in the United States of America. Now that symbolic of, and I don't believe God is the same as he was today as he is, was back then, that symbolic or it's consistent with the time period that Israel was under Pharaoh's bondage in Egypt. The bondage in, 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 in Egypt lasted for 400 years. And after 400 years, God raised up a deliverer by the name of Moses. And as it was then, I believe so it is now. 400, the 400 year time cycle for, for, for the North American slave trade started in the United States of America in 1619 when the first slave ship landed in Jamestown, Virginia 2000, and, and, and 1619 that time period of 400 years ended in 2019 December 31st 2019 concluded or ended a 400 year time period of slavery from the time it started in America that time ended, that 400 year time cycle ended in 2019. So this is why in 2020, it's a new day has begun. It's a new time cycle has started, a new time frame has begun, and the old has expired. So as God delivered his people after 400 years, I believe God will deliver the oppress of America and around the world because the 400 year time cycle has expired. 400 years they were under Pharaoh's bondage. 400 years has been the time cycle of slavery in the United States of America and the world because it's around the world. It wasn't just America that had slaves. I mean, Europe, the Europeans, there were European slave traders, there were European slave masters, but all started in 1619. And I do believe that 1619 is the root of COVID-19. I believe the 16. 19 slave trade, in other words, all that abuse, all, 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 all the, the uh, injustice has, has caused that which we are experiencing now to be relevant with us. And I do believe that God is about to destroy slavery. God's about to destroy racism in America. He's about to break the back of this thing. And I believe that the process has already started. This is why the, 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 the uh, uh, protesting has been so intense that, and because folks are crying out this stuff has to end and i believe god is motivating it because god wants to bring about the the ending of the virus of racism you know we talk about coronavirus uh racism is another virus that we got to deal with but i want you to know the same thing that ends the plague of coronavirus will end the plague of racism virus amen so what we're going to look at today is what will destroy the plague what will destroy the plague? And 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 we see here where where, where Jesus gave them parable that men are to always pray. In other words, prayer is the weapon. Prayer is the answer. Prayer is that which will destroy the plague. Okay, saying that there was in the city a judge, verse two, Luke eighteen two, 
that feared not God nor regarded man. In other words, this judge, he did not fear God, nor did he care about man. In other words, he did not regard people. He, didn't re he did not care about the kids. He did not care about anybody. Neither did he fear God. I'll let you fill in the blank there because these kind of things are with us today. So this, this young judge, he did not fear God, nor did he regard men. And there was a woman in that city and she came to him saying, avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward, he said within himself, though I fear not God nor regard man. In other words, this guy, he was bold. He said, I don't, I don't regard man. I don't fear God. He said, even though I, I live for myself, I'm my own boss. I do my own uh, dealing. I make my own choices. Even though I don't fear, fear God, nor do I uh, uh, regard man. Yet, because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. He said, and the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night, which cry day and night, which cry, which pray day and night, though he bear along with him. He said, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find face on the earth? In other words, this unjust judge, in other words, he didn't love God, he didn't God, God, he didn't fear God, he didn't respect God, nor did he care about people. But he said, just because this woman won't leave me alone, she won't go away, he said, I'm going to give her what she wants. In other words, it was her persistence, it was her continuous that caused the unjust judge to avenge the woman of her adversary and the plague, whatever it is she was dealing with, whatever it is this person was doing to her, I don't know if it was a debt collector, I don't know if it was an abusive husband, I don't know if it was an abusive supervisor, I don't know what it was, the, uh, the unjust judge said, this woman will not go away, she will not leave me alone, I might as well give her what she wants. Then he said, will not God avenge them to cry unto him day and night? Folks, we're in a sign period, we got to cry unto God and prayer day and night in order to remove this plague. So as it was then, so it is now. The Bible says the effectual, fervent prayer. I'm talking about fire, red hot prayer of the righteous avail much. In other words, we got to pray with the fire of the Holy Ghost. We got to pray with intensity. We got to pray with some zeal. He said, and that prayer will avail much. And, and, and the Amplified Bible said that the, the effectual fervent prayer avail much. It's dynamic in its working and it releases Tremendous power, tremendous power. And I want you to know, we need that tremendous power. But what's going to do it? It's going to take the prayer of the righteous. It's going to take the prayer of the righteous. First Thessalonians 5, 17 says, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. He said, don't complain, but pray without ceasing. Always stay in an attitude of prayer. And that's why I put a strong emphasis on the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the first evidence being praying in tongues because I want you to know your prayer language is far more effective than your praying and understanding. But we must pray all in the spirit. So we must pray without ceasing. Why? Because when we pray in tongues, we pray the perfect will of God. We pray what God's will is even though we don't know it in our natural mind or in our natural understanding. We pray what God wants prayed when we pray in tongues. And I want you to know that's very effective. So we've got to be the people that I don't know about you, but I want to see this plague done away with. I want to see this, this coronavirus become a non-existent thing. And I do believe as we, if we pray without ceasing, if we be like this woman, and you know, I thank God for there's, there's always a woman in the Bible that, 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 that's, that's persistent and going after God to get what she wants. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? In other words, she pressed her way. She said, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. And he pressed her way. She touched Jesus' clothing and the, and, the, and the issue of blood. In other words, the bleeding in her body stopped. Why? Because she was persistent and she was determined to get what she wanted. She believed that she would receive it. She knew God. She knew Jesus had the power. Do you know Jesus got the power to, to get rid of this virus? But so you, we've got to be persistent, just like that woman with the issue of blood. We've got to be persistent, just like the woman with the unjust judge, and this plague will be stopped. Okay, now I want to go back to the Old Testament. I want to go back to the book of Numbers. I want to go back to Numbers chapter 16, where we'll find a story here, which was written for 
admonition and, and a sign and a symbol of, 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 the, of the end time church today and the people of people that are on the earth today. I believe this is a picture of prayer like most of us have never seen it before. They're going to see the, the symbols and the, and, the, and, and the instruments of prayer and how those instruments in prayer stop the plague. Now I want to pick up here in verse number 42. I want to pick up with number 1642. He said, it came to pass when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron, that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation, and behold, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared. In other words, uh, this is the, the, the people of Korah. They were a wicked, uh, self-righteous, proud, religious a group of people they came up against the servant of the Lord they came up against Moses and Aaron and and, and, they, and they, they said uh, they was making accusations against them that you think that you're the only one that can hear from God and they were saying all this stuff and, and they, they 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 angered God and they irritated Moses and I'm gonna go back to uh, 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 some previous verses in here up around verse 29 28 where Moses told those people Moses said if God do a new thing uh, in the earth, and the earth opened his mouth and swallow you all up. He said, "If y'all got, if you guys die a natural death, God didn't send me." He said, "But if God do a new thing, and the earth open his mouth and and, uh, and swallow you up, it will be proof that God sent me." In other words, they were they were coming against the servant of the Lord. And I'm telling you, you better be careful how you come against the servant of the Lord at any time, especially in these last days, because the judgment, and the glory of God, is going to be upon his servants like never before. And the people of Korah, the Bible. If you look at verse 32, I'm not going to read that, but you read verse 32, where the earth opened its mouth. In other words, the earth quaked, it cracked and opened its mouth, and all that pertained to Korah went down into the pit alive. In other words, they went to hell alive. In other words, they spoke against Moses, and God, God, God vindicated Moses. God opened the earth up. The earth opened its mouth and swallowed up Korah and all of his family. And, 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 and that whole bunch that was with uh, with Korah, they were they were totally against Moses and and Aaron. But you see, all of them didn't fall down in the pit. All of them didn't go to hell alive. The ones that were left, that were in rebellion against God, speaking against the servant of the Lord, they were full of wickedness. They they had hell in them. They had devil on their side. They had they were working for the devil, working against God. And then we were going to see here what happened to them. But also we're going to see God's mercy and how God stopped the plague among them. And I want you to know this coronavirus is a plague, a pestilence. And the same thing that stopped this plague in their day was stop the plague in our day, 2020. Okay, I'll pick it up here with verse number 45. He says, and Moses said unto Aaron, number 1645, Moses said unto Aaron, take a sense of, and put fire therein. Come on, somebody say fire. He said, put fire therein, uh, in from off the altar, and put on incense. In other words, you take a censer. The censer was the hold. The censer was like a bowl. He said, put some fire in the censer. Put fire in the censer. He said, when you get the fire in the censer, uh, he said, and uh, 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 and put incense on the fire. Put incense on the fire. He says, and go quickly into the congregation and make an atonement for them. For there is wrath come out from the Lord, the plague is begun. In other words, the plague had started. This is like coronavirus has already started. But look at what Moses told Aaron, and Aaron represented the priesthood. And, and we as believers, we are, like Peter said in, in 1 Peter chapter 2, we are a holy priesthood, a chosen nation, a holy priesthood, that you should show forth the praises of God, who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. In other words, we are the priests of the day. We are the intercessors of today. We are the ones that will go before God. And, and Aaron was instructed by Moses to take a censer, put fire therein from the altar, and put on incense. I'll put the word, put incense in the fire. He said, and go quickly into the congregation and make an atonement for them, for there is wrath going out from the Lord. The plague has begun. In other words, not only did part of Korah's group fell down in the, in the hell alive, the one that were left got hit with a plague. They got hit with coronavirus. They got hit with a plague that, that were taking their lives on a daily basis 
faster and even more than we're experiencing today. Folks, we think we, we're experiencing high numbers of people dying from the plague. You wait till we look at it and see how many people died in one day in the city of Korah. And the Bible said, the word said, the plague has begun. The plague has begun. And the Bible says in verse 47, And Aaron took as Moses had commanded and ran in the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague was begun among the people. And he put on incense. He put on incense. In other words, he had the bowl in the fire. Then he put incense on the fire and he made an atonement for the people. In other words, the incense, the fire, and the, the incense, the fire, and the censer is a type of prayer and intercession. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm going to read the rest of this here. He said, he made an atonement for the people, other words, for the sins of the people. Other words, they had sinned against God. And I want you to know that, that, that the reason this plague is here is because the sins of mankind have come up before God. The sins of America, the sins of a people of America has come up before God. And we need an atonement. We need an intercessor. You see, but because today we have the blood of Jesus Christ. But the atonement came through the censer, the fire, and the incense which is a type of our prayer and our intercession. Okay, and he says, and the, and the Bible says in verse 48, and he, that is Aaron, he stood between the dead and the living. He stood between the dead and the living, and the plague was stayed. In other words, when Aaron offered up that, uh, offered up that censer with the fire and the incense that went up before God, that he said the plague was stayed. The plague was stopped. In other words, the people stopped dying. The virus ceased to be. The plague ceased to be all of a sudden. But what did it take? It took the censer, it took the fire, and it took some incense. When Aaron went into the midst of the congregation, stood between the living and the dead. And I want you to know that's the work of an intercessor. We stand between the living and the dead. We declare to those who have yet or are yet alive, we say, devil, you will not have them. In the name of Jesus, we say, thus far and no more coronavirus, we declare that the plague be stopped because of our prayer and our intercession. Okay? He stood between the inner, he stood between the he stood between the living and the dead, and the plague was stayed. Old King James says stayed. Our, our new translation says stop. The plague stopped. What, what stopped the plague? It was intercession. It was the prayer of the righteous. It was the prayer of Aaron that stopped the plague. The Bible says, and, and look, at the, look at the death count for, for one day. Verse 49. Now when they had, now they that died in the plague, were 14,700 beside them that died in the matter of Korah. In other words, 14,700 died in one day. I mean, when the plague was at its high point in New York City, that many people didn't die. But because of the wickedness and the wrath of God being poured out upon their wickedness because of their sin, because of their unrepentant, because of their lack of prayer, 14,700 died and uh, died and, and, and uh, about in the matter of, uh, of as in the matter of Korah. In other words, 14,700 of them died in one day. But what stopped the plague? It was the prayers of Aaron. It was the intercession of Aaron. And the Bible says in verse 50, And Aaron returned unto Moses, unto the door of the tabernacle, and the congregation, of the congregation, and the plague was stayed. In other words, and the plague was stopped. Verse 50 said the plague was stopped. What stopped the plague? It was the censer, the fire, and the incense. The censer, the fire, and the incense, which is a picture of prayer and intercession. Okay, we are the censer. I am God's censer. You are God's censer. That is the vessel, the holder, that which holds the fire. The fire is the presence of the Holy Spirit. He said, ye shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire whose fan is in his hand, he will thoroughly purge his threshing floor. So we, we, that's why we got to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Because without, without the fire, the incense won't burn. So the fire represents the presence of the Holy Spirit. We are the censer. We are the vessel. We are the holders. Okay, the, the, the incense 
is the prayers of the righteous. The incense are our word that goes up before God as a sweet smell. And when we operate in prayer and intercession on a consistent basis, without ceasing, just like the woman with the unjust judge, it will stop this plague. I said it will stop this plague of coronavirus. I said it's the prayers of the righteous that must go forth. That's why the Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and heal their land. What God's waiting on? God's waiting for the righteous, his people, to humble themselves and pray without ceasing. Pray with some fire. Pray with some power. Pray with some intensity and zeal and the plague will be stopped. The Bible says, and the plague was stopped. Okay, now I'm going to the book of Revelation, just about done. Revelation chapter 8. Revelation chapter 8. Talking about that censer, the fire, and the incense represents the prayers of the righteous. Revelation chapter 8, verse 1. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of one half an hour. And I saw seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. There's that word censer again, which was the holder, which is the vessel. Or we could say the bowl, having a golden censer, or a golden, having a golden bowl in his hands. And he said, there was given unto him much incense, much incense. In other words, we remember, like I mentioned, the incense represents our prayer. We are the bowls. We are the sensor. Our vessels, our bodies, we are the sensor. Our prayer represents the bowl. Our prayer, and our prayer represents, our prayer represents the incense. Our body represents the bowl. He said, and that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints, saints ascended up before God out of the hand of the angels. Okay, so here we got a, a censer, we got some incense, and we got some smoke. And you know, wherever there's smoke, there's also fire. That's right. Where there, there's, there's some smoke, there's some heat. They could Because there has to be something to make it smoke. So it's the fire of the Holy Spirit, the fiery presence of God represented uh, in, in, in this picture here in Revelation chapter 8, uh, represented the prayers of the saints. Notice, notice it says, he says, and the smoke of the incense which came up with the prayers of the saints, came up with the prayers of the saints. In other words, my question to you, my friend, how, how much smoke have you been sending up? How much smoke have you been sending up? I say, how much smoke have you been sending up? How much, how much incense have you been burning? How much incense have you been burning? I want you to know, you need to start burning some incense. We need to start sending up some smoke, folks. I mean, we need to start sending up smoke morning, noon, and night because it was prayers of the saints. It was the, it was the smoke from the incense of the prayer of that ignited with the uh, connected with the fire of God that stopped the stopped the plague. What stopped the plague? It's the prayers of the righteous. I said the prayers of the righteous will stop the plague, and we need to pray like never before. We need to we need to individually pray. We need to corporately pray as best we can, and we 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 we're doing our our, our corporate prayer on, on six o'clock every Friday every Thursday afternoon. Very important that you get in on that prayer. Uh, call one of the prayer warriors and get the get the link, get the get the number, and get the action access code. Get in on that six o'clock prayer because I want you to know it's the prayers of the righteous is going to avail much and it's going to stop this plague. And I, I want to read verse five because verse five is very important. He said, and the, and the angel took the censer and the same angel here that took the censer and filled, and filled it with fire off the altar and cast it into the earth. In other words, that censer that was full of the prayers of the righteous was taken by the angel. Hallelujah. It took off the altar and cast it into the earth. And there was voices and thunderings and lightnings and a great earthquake. In other words, when the angel took the censer from the altar with all those prayers in it, that angel cast that censer into the earth 
And the Bible says there was thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And, and I want you to know what I believe this is a picture of. That God is about to ignite a prayer move among his people. Because the prayers, the fire for, for, for prayer is about to be released from heaven. I believe this is a part of those angels that's going to, angels of intercession that are about to be released in heaven. Going to motivate us to pray like we've never prayed before. We're going to spend hours in prayer. And we're not going to worry about situations or even food. We're going to spend hours in prayer because I believe there's a prayer move coming to the body of Christ because the angels is about to take that sense up full of prayer and fire and cast it into the earth. And there's going to be prayer and intercession like we've never known it before. And I believe along with that, there's about to be answers to prayers like we the prayers that we were praying for years that are about to be manifested because I believe those angels represent that fire that's coming into the earth and they're coming in with the answers. They're coming in with what we've been crying out to God for because those angels are about to break through. But I want you to know, my friend, it's going to be the prayers of the righteous that's going to stop this plague. Now I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray right now for the church to be motivated to pray to pray like never before. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those that have heard this, those that have a heart after you, a hunger after your heart, God, that will begin they will begin to pray like Daniel prayed on a three times a day and not only this three times a day consistently. God, let the angels begin to throw that sense of into the earth. Let the fire begin to ignite prayer in us like never before that will stay before you God and we'll see a mighty harvest and that souls will be saved and multitudes will come into the kingdom of God and a revival of the kingdom and the restoration of God's dominion will come in planet earth like we've never known it before but it's going to take the prayers of the righteous to stop this plague of racism, to stop this plague of violence, to stop this plague of white supremacy, police brutality, systemic racism. It's going to take the prayers of the righteous to avail much. Because he says that my people, I say it again, which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Seek my face. Turn from their wicked ways. God said he will hear us from heaven, forgive our sin, and heal our land. But it's the prayers of the righteous that will stop the plague. If you need Jesus in your life, pray this prayer. Say, Lord, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that he died on the cross for me. And I believe that he rose from the dead. And I receive him into my life as my Lord and Savior. Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost and fire so that I can be a part of this prayer army in Jesus' name. May, may the Lord bless you real good. And my, my friend, well, I pray that that prayer would be ignited in your life like never before. And we're going to see God show up. And we're going to see this virus stayed and stopped. And the revival of the Holy Ghost will break out in planet Earth like we've never seen it before. Because this thing is stopping us from coming together. It's stopping us from being able to communicate, being able to connect with one another. And, 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 and the corporate anointing is what needs to be released. And there's coming or coming together. But right now, we're in preparation mode. We're in preparation. We're in get ready mode where God has isolated us, quarantined us, take away the distractions so that we can focus in on the things that really matter. And I want you to know prayer and the meditation, the reading, the speaking of the word of God is primary for us right now. The priority must be priority. The Bible says that if we seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, all these other things will be added. And I want you to know he'll be the God of all supply and he will richly bless you. And until the next uh, broadcast, until the next time with you, next session, may the Lord bless you. Like our YouTube channel, subscribe to our channel, tell others about our channel, and, and, and let the word of God dwell in you richly. But pray without ceasing is my prayer and my admonition to you. Till next time, may God bless you. I love you. I'll be praying for you.